town for the big show tonight. I'm with the Bisbee comedians. Are y'all going to the big show? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good. So you know who the Bisbee comedians are? No. 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 Oh, well, for goodness sake, we're only one of the largest tent shows in all of the Southeast. You do know what a tent show is, don't you? <laughs> if you don't, uh, mind me putting on my face, I guess while I'm doing that, I could tell you a little bit about tent shows and Toby shows. Would that be all right? Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. But it all began with small town America's craving for entertainment. I mean, I don't know about you, but in my little hometown of Wynwood, Oklahoma, about the only exciting thing to happen was the county fair and when the Jimmy Warren Stock Company came to town. <laughs> the last three decades of the 19th century were called the golden age of the opera house. Now you know what an opera house is, don't you? Well, you ought to because you got two. One in Abbeville and one in Newberry. <laughs> See, with the expansion of the railroad, Opera houses started springing up in little towns all over the Midwest and South. And the plays that they produced in those opera houses, they were popular three-act plays, uh, classical plays, popular melodrama, but never opera. So you know why they call them an opera house, don't you? No. Well, let me tell you. <laughs> because... The word opera did not have the negative connotations that the word theater did in the 19th century. Yeah, and I guess that still applies today. I mean, people think that actors are somehow immoral or beneath them. Well, I guess with all the crazy people running around in Hollywood, like they don't have any sense, I could see that, but... Um, but it gives hard-working, God-fearing performers like me a bad name, and I don't like it, buddy. <laughs> to a train, dealing with their schedules, relying on a farmer and his wagon to get you where you needed to go. Now you can just throw your show in the back of a truck and go to towns that not only don't have an opera house, but towns that don't even have a train stop. So for the companies, it expanded their territory. And for the people, it brought theater to people that might not have gotten the opportunity to see it otherwise. Now, we don't know who the first Toby was. We don't know where it was. That's going to be highly debated. But I think, besides being a funny character, I think the Toby character's function was he provided a representation of the rural American that they could watch on a stage. And to top it all off, with all these new inventions, radio, automobiles, picture shows, I mean, we are afraid that people will want to jump in their automobile and go see a picture show instead of coming and seeing live entertainment. I mean, heck, who knows? One day, there could be a movie screen in your own house and you could just sit on the couch in your underwear and not go anywhere for a year or more. <laughs> I don't even want to think about that. We had quite a scare yesterday. Your brother John locked his keys in the car and it took him nearly two hours to get me and your pa out. <laughs> Take a minute for that one. And all of a sudden, a big whoosh of wind came into the audience end of the tent and, and picked the entire tent up that end and set it back down again. Some quick thinking men from 
the audience jumped on those quarter poles to hold them down. We call that riding the poles. There was a big crash, the lights went out, the lights came back on again, and those men were still hanging on the poles, and everybody broke out into spontaneous applause. That storm blew up quick and blew out just as quick. Those men risked their lives for our show, which is really their show too, if you come to 